There are a lot of factors that are involved in determining cardiac output. Remember that cardiac output is the total amount of blood that's pumped out of the heart in one minute. So the way it's calculated is by multiplying the stroke volume times the heart rate and we get the cardiac output. So this is supposed to say CO equals stroke volume times heart rate. I'm not sure what happened on the slide here. So let's talk about ways in which the stroke volume can be changed. Um, so in order to calculate the stroke volume, we have to consider these two important numbers. There's the end diastolic volume, which is the preload, and there's the end systolic volume, and that's the, that's the amount of blood that's remaining after the ventricle has ejected the stroke volume. So to calculate stroke volume, we take the EDV, which is gonna be the larger number, and we subtract the ESV, the end stroke volume. So the end diastolic volume is the preload. What the preload is, is the, think of the amount of stretching of the muscle beforehand. And that would be equal to the venous return. It's the blood that's returning from the veins, going into the right atrium, going into the ventricle, or the left atrium into the left ventricle. So ways in which the venous return is increased, there is exercise through sympathetic activity, there's skeletal muscle, and respiratory pumps. And uh, that'll be discussed more in chapter 19. But the skeletal muscle, especially in the calf, um, as it contracts, it helps to pump the blood back towards the heart. Other ways to increase the venous return are to increase the ventricular filling time, and that's due to a low heart rate. So that's especially important in athletes. Athletes normally have a low resting heart rate. And due to that fact, there's a longer period of time for the ventricle to fill with blood. So now let's look over here at the end systolic volume. Again, that's the amount of blood that's remaining after systole, after contraction of the ventricle. So one thing that increases that is contractility, the forcefulness with which the ventricle contracts. Also, there's various hormones and chemicals that can increase that. The heart rate can be changed by the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system, the two main parts of it would be the sympathetic division, the fight or flight, and the parasympathetic division, the rest and digest. So a couple important things to remember here are that an increase in cardiac output leads to an increase in blood pressure, and a decrease in cardiac output leads to a decrease in blood pressure. So let's look a little more closely at the stroke volume. So mathematically, the stroke volume is calculated by subtracting the EDV, and starting with the EDV and then subtracting the ESV. So the EDV is affected by the length of the relaxation phase, the ventricular diastole, and the venous pressure. The end systolic volume, it's affected by ventricular contraction. So a normal stroke volume is usually 70 milliliters per beat. So the 120 milliliters would be the total amount of blood in the ventricle, and the f it would be the EDV, and the 50 milliliters would be the amount of blood left in the ventricle, the ESV. So 70 milliliters will be our stroke volume. Now the three main factors that affect stroke volume, uh, this is uh, sometimes referred to as the Frank Starling Law of the Heart, but there's three main factors. There's the preload, the contractility, and the afterload. So the preload, um, I want you to think of this as 
the stretching of the heart muscle. So this is one reason it's really good for you to, to have aerobic exercise, to exercise your heart muscle. So the preload is the degree of stretch to which the cardiac muscle is stretched beforehand. And the preload also is re referred to as the venous return. And again, that's the blood that's going to be returning to the ventricles. So a slow heartbeat and exercise can increase the venous return. And again, this is uh, important here because the venous return leads to an increase in the amount of blood that's in the heart. That's the filling phase, which can increase the stroke volume, eventually increasing cardiac output. The contractility, this is going to be the phase of the heart um, that is the forcefulness of the heart. So the contractility can lower the end systolic volume because it is very, it makes the heart more forceful and can pump more blood out of the ventricle. And something that can increase this would be sympathetic, the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is very important for affecting heart rate and the force of contractility. Now the regulation of the stroke volume is also important with cardiac output, um, especially afterload. And the afterload, I want you to think of it as the amount of pressure that has to be overcome. So the ventricles, they must overcome this pressure in order to eject blood. This is one of the reasons that hypertension increases the afterload because there's a uh, greater force that's required.